Yo, Adam Saxton here with Guy in a Cube, and today we are going to look at how you can create a mail enabled group to get around a problem of when you can't share apps to your organization. Stay tuned. I'm so happy you're able to join us today. Be sure to subscribe for more great updates from both Patrick and myself if you're not already. Time for a little story. So a customer I was helping had a problem where they wanted to share an app from an app workspace to their organization. The thing that they were running into is the fact that all of their groups are based on O365 unified groups, which are what backs app workspaces. And the problem there is that those don't show up when you try to go to actually share. And so a workaround I came up with for them that I'm gonna share with you today actually creates a mail enabled group, which is what you need in order to use groups inside of like the access tab for apps or any pretty much anything inside of Power BI. It needs to be a mail enabled security group. There are a couple different ways you can actually create a mail enabled security group, but today I'm gonna highlight using PowerShell to actually create the new mail enabled security group and then copy members from a given O365 group into that new mail enabled group. So let's get to the computer. I've got the PowerShell script in front of me, but before we get into the main part of the script, I wanna highlight that we need to have prerequisites in place so that this actually runs successfully. So to start, I'm gonna go get my user credentials. Let's go run the selected. Hit okay, comes back, good. Then we're gonna go ahead and log into Azure AD. I expect this to fail, and it does. So it's saying that our the connect-azure AD script doesn't know what this command is. It's not familiar with it. So what we need to do is go install the Azure AD PowerShell commandlets, or the PowerShell module. So we'll go run as admin, and it is, it is as easy as doing install. It's as easy as just running this command. And when we go run it, I'm gonna go and say all, and it will install the package. All right, cool. So that's there now. If we go back here, and boom, now it works. We got our, we have logged in successfully to Azure AD. Everything there is in place. So we need to make sure that we've installed the Azure AD module in order to be able to connect to Azure AD and use the commands that we need to copy members from groups. Okay, so now let's go back and look at what this script is actually doing. So again, we're gonna go get our credentials. That will come back pretty quickly. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create an actual session. This is how you can get the exchange commandlets to be able to use those to create. We're gonna need that to create the mail enabled security group. And I've got this script up on GitHub. I've got a link down in the description below if you wanna go grab this entire thing so that you can try it on your end. So we're gonna go and run this session piece. This should happen pretty quick. The next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna import that session. This is actually what brings those commands locally for us to use. We're gonna use that, and this will take a second or two. All right, we've now got those commands. Now we're gonna to connect to Azure AD. So far, so good. We haven't done anything really special here. We're just prepping the session so that we can use all the commands that we need to use. Okay, the next thing is, is I'm gonna set up some variables here. So I'm gonna put in my, the old group. So this is the Office 365 unified group that I wanna copy the members from. So all you need to do is just supply the name of that Office 365 unified group. In my case, it's sales group. And then I wanna give the name of the new group that we're gonna create. And so I'll just call it my group just for demonstration purposes. We'll go ahead and run this. All right, nothing special there. So now what we're gonna do is create a new distribution group. The new distribution group is part of the Exchange commandlet. So you need to have a license with Exchange Online in order to run this command. So E3, E5, something of that nature. We're gonna pass in the new name. Type is going to be security because we wanna make this a security, a mail enabled security group. I'm also supplying some additional parameters. You don't necessarily need to do this, but I did just for cleanliness sake. I am specifying who's managing the group, so you can specify whoever you want. And then I'm also specifying the primary SMTP address for this group. All right, so at this point, we will go create our new distribution group. 
Okay, that created successfully. It is now security enabled. It is a male security enabled distribution group. So now what we need to do is I'm actually going and getting a reference to the Office 365 Unified Group and the new distribution group that we just got because we're gonna go grab properties off of those groups. So we'll go and grab those. That worked successfully. Now we're also gonna go grab the members of the old group. So these are all the members in that Office 365 Unified Group. Let's go and run that. Then what we're gonna do is just loop through each one of those. We're gonna loop through that member's collection. And for each member that's in that collection, we're gonna add that member to the distribution group. So this add distribution group member command is part of that exchange commandlet. So we're gonna actually use that to add those members to the group. So we'll go and loop through that. And that's it. We got it done. One thing to note is after you create this from a PowerShell perspective, it's gonna take a minute or two before it's actually reflected in the system. So you gotta be a little patient for it to actually show up either in the portal or when you're actually running those PowerShell commands against the new group. So just be patient, it'll get there. Uh, from my end, I've seen it show up within five minutes or so, so it's not super long, but it takes a little bit. All right, so if we go back and we do a sanity check, we're gonna go get the members of the new group. So this was giving me an error right after I created the group, but now if we go and run it, it should work perfectly fine and we'll see the members of that group. So it copied those members successfully, so that's good. And now if we jump over to, this is the Exchange Admin Center, we'll see my group listed here. And if we go and edit that group, We'll also see information about the group and we'll see who are the members of that group along with the owner, which is what I specified. So this was created successfully inside of Exchange. And then if we go to the actual Office 365 portal, we go to groups, then we can see our my group here and we can see up here, it says mail enabled security group, which is great, mail enabled security group. So now if we go to Power BI, we go here and we'll do update app and we'll say, hey, the people I wanna access this, I want it to go to sales group. But what you'll see here is that nothing comes up because it's not, it's an Office 365 unified group. It's, it's not gonna register here and I can't actually send that to, that group won't show up in the pop-up. But now that I've created that new mail enabled group, I can do my group and we can see here that it is now available in the list for me to select. So it has to be a mail enabled security group. And so one thing we can do as a workaround is we have the Office 365 unified group, and then we can create another mail enabled group that duplicates the membership. That's great for a first time create it, but managing that, managing that going forward, you're gonna have to remember that two groups exist. You're gonna have to create that member inside of the Office 365 Unified Group, and then either script differences in the back end occasionally every once in a while, maybe once a day, and get those added to that mail enabled security group as well to make sure that they're in sync. All right, let me know down in the comments what you think. Do you have another way that you're handling this problem? I'd love to hear it. Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. Like I said, there's more than one way to handle this scenario and I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this topic. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button for more great content from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video. I am so happy. Ooh.